So here I am at the Dollar Tree and getting more supplies for the hut as well as uh, my exploration of the compound. They actually have um, sharpening stone here, would you believe that? For only a dollar. So I'm going to get this to sharpen my machete. Um, then looking for covering for the um, yurt. They have 4x6 tarp right here. Not a cheap one, but um, it's only 4x6. And they also have um, these clear plastic drop cloth for, uh, that are 9 feet by 12 feet. So because my budget's limited and also this isn't a permanent structure, just something for practice, I'm going to go ahead and go with the cheaper, which means um, going with this drop cloth. I think three of these should be enough. Maybe even two, but they're a dollar each, so I figured three dollars to get the covering. And then this um, sharpening stone, it's not even for the covering, but for the machete. And I think that should be enough. I also see some supplies here that I'll be getting later for a, another project coming up. Hello everybody, I uh, just wanted to well, come you back. Today is Sunday, April 16th, 2017. Happy Easter everybody. As you can see, we are currently back at the location for the yurt. And it has... Part of the wall here has started to blow down because... It's been pretty windy over the last couple of days and today. Um, I'm hoping the wind noise is not too loud here for this video, but uh, you can see why I need to reinforce this uh, the building here before I do anything else to it because the wind blew it down. Um, it didn't completely go down, but part of the wall right here, this side right here, has gone down, blown in. So the plan today is to reinforce the structure and make it a lot stronger. Um, I've also brought... Um, some cheap covering here. These are some plastic paint drop cloth from um, Dollar Tree. I bought three packets of them for a dollar each. And that's what we're going to use to cover our yurt. Um, I thought of different things to try to use, um, including uh, going with the frond leaves themselves, which would make it more traditional. Uh, but I didn't want to spend all day or all year working on this yurt. <laughs> we haven't been very traditional at all. We've been using um, duct tape, plastic ties. Uh, this whole structure was built um, primarily as an emergency quickie shelter. Um, I'm thinking that if you do it with the, um, the plastic drop cloth, the zip ties, and the, the tape here, the um, duct tape, you could probably put together a structure like this in about a day, maybe two days max. Uh, if you go more traditional and you have to weave, which I've thought of, um, these um, leaves here, frond leaves, actually would make a good material for the, possibly good material, for the roofing and the, um, the walls. So if I didn't have the drop cloth, I would have probably ended up using these things to weave. I'd have to find them from elsewhere though. You don't want to strip the ones all around here because this is what's helping the area to remain somewhat camouflaged and hidden from the, um, the flying men. So, um, we'll go ahead and see how far we get along um, on construction of the yurt today, so stay tuned. Alright, this is going a lot slower than I had thought it would. But as you can see, I've um, started to put support beams along the top because the structure kept blowing down. And these frond stems aren't that strong, they're brittle. So I've tried to reinforce all along the top and I'm currently just putting support beams across. Just been um, taping it. Hopefully this tape doesn't melt. I may go back and um, use some zip ties later. But for now, I'm just trying to keep the structure from blowing down because it is super windy back here. And um, I think I've got it somewhat organized now. I'm estimating that the um, circumference or the diameter here, this is the diameter, right? Is um, the yurt itself is about, probably about 10 to 12 feet wide. It's pretty uh, decent size. So I'm going to continue to put these beams off. I'm not like going in any order. I'm just kind of reinforcing spots as I see where they're kind of weak, like right there will need to be enforced, and um, taping it down, and the structure's starting to get a little bit stronger now. 
All right, for the most part, I've got the um, most of the beams in place to uh, reinforce the structure. It's still a bit flimsy, but it's um, quite a bit stronger than before. You can see I've run beams all along the top. And um, also reinforced some, um, some cross beams going across various sections. I left some open because I'm planning on putting windows. I'm putting windows throughout the um, the yurt so that air can blow through the window back here. Basically, planning on windows so um, we can get some air, a breeze through here. And it's nice that it's in the shade, so. But I think that I'm going to need to reinforce these ties with um, the tie downs because these tape things are already falling off. I think um, the heat will make them fall apart as well as the rain. So I'm gonna have to reinforce it by um, tying down the beams, which is gonna be a lot of work, but I don't think I have a choice. All right, I have gone around and put the, um, the cable tie, I guess that's what they're called, cable tie thingies, all along as best as I could at the various junctions because the tape is starting to flake. Some of it I didn't, so hopefully it doesn't fall apart. But the structure appears, for now at least, see I'm shaking it here, but it seems to be holding. Whereas when I first got here, this front door area had collapsed. So I think it's stable enough now that I can start considering uh, roofing. Um, this is actually taking a long time, and on the video I, di I didn't show me actually working, but it's a couple hours later. This process of trying to enforce or reinforce the, um, the walls with these beams took a lot longer than you would anticipate. And um, now I'm going to try to make the, um, the roofing or part of it. I don't think I'm going to finish today because it's getting late and i got to head out of here soon. But um, I think the structure's coming along. How well it's coming along remains to be seen, but it is coming along. All right, I have cut six pieces uh, that are approximately, what, about 14, 16 inches um, long, roughly the same size. I'm planning on using this to make the center of the roofing. So we're gonna uh, um, try to assemble a hexagon. So all my days as a teacher, teaching shapes to my first graders. It's coming through. A hexagon has six sides, equal sides, and that's what we've got, roughly. So we're gonna try to make a hexagon. All right, originally I had thought of making a hexagon for the center of the roofing, but after laying it out, um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and make an octagon. So we have eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight sides, all equal. Um, we're going to try to make a hexagon, I mean not a hexagon, an octagon, which will have eight sides to become the center of the roofing. Alright, here then is our octagon. We got one side, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight sides. And all I did was just lay it out and then um, use the tie downs to tie it in, but you can see it's uh, flimsy. So what I'm going to do is um, probably use some tape to kind of help hold it in place. I'll take some of my um, duct tape and just tape the, the joints to kind of hold it a little bit stable. Then we're going to try to get fronds that are long enough to reach into the center. We might have to make them again because I don't think they'll be long enough. But um, then hopefully we can get the framework for the, um, the ceiling done today if, if, if we don't even get to cover it. But um, if we can get the ceiling, I'll be very happy. Well, not the ceiling, but the roofing. As you can see, we have made our um, octagon now. So this is our octagon shape that we're going to be using for the um, roofing. Now it's a matter of getting long fronds or making fronds that are long. I'm going to be looking right here at newly fallen ones. Ideally, we get like a single piece that's long. That would be best. So hopefully we'll get at least eight of them. Here we have some new fronds that I just cut. I picked them up from various locations here. 
and we're going to try to lay them out and see how um, if they're going to be long enough to extend up towards the roof to give us a, a, a roof for our yurt. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but essentially what I did was I took the centerpiece and I put the ribbing for the roofing out, and I'm going to try to hoist it up. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it by myself. This would be easier with two people, but you got to do what you got to do, right? So hopefully I can get it to, to stay up there and, and secure it. After frustratingly trying to mount, put this up, pull this up by myself, it's proving impossible. I've decided to um, put some beams coming out here to help me secure it, to hold it in place. While I, um, I got like four beams right now. They're not even centered. I'm, I'm not even measuring. I mean, ideally I should set it up as a hexagon. Everything should have been a hexagon, but you know, this is build hodgepodge type. I wasn't, it wasn't like thought out or planned. So we'll do our best to connect it and see if we can't get the, the roof to stay up. Yeah, I uh, started to put up the roof, but I've run out of time. I would like to finish it, but I can't because I got to run. So we're gonna have to try to finish it later. Um, it's inverted right now, which is very bad, but I can't really do anything about it. So we're gonna have to resume construction next time.